All right guys, welcome back to the channel. So if you've been following me for a little bit, you may already recognize this truck, but it's a 2006 Chevrolet Silverado. This one actually has been swapped out with a built six liter twin turbo Performa built 4L60. So let's go ahead on and get it inside and make some boost. <laughs> Go ahead on and check out the Silverado. Get this hood up so you guys can see what combination it's got now. So if you didn't see the other video, we do have a twin turbo six liter. Now this truck used to have a Velocity, I believe was the name of it, Amazon sheet metal intake. So that's been swapped out for the truck intake. One of the issues it had was that Velocity intake was actually a rec port intake manifold. And then they had done billet spacers to adapt it back down to Cathedral, which was kind of strange. We had an issue with the plug wires getting burned up. So the guys went ahead on and relocated the coils. So I mean, we've got a lot going on under here, as you guys can see, but most of this stuff is obviously going to be necessary with the way this turbo kit is. The truck also is now on ethanol. So you can see the Summit flex fuel sensor that has the high flow bypass where it actually flows a little bit better than factory. So everything else is looking good so far. So supposedly the wastegates have 14 pound springs in them. So hopefully that's what we end up seeing today. It's got a fresh set of BR70F plugs in it. Obviously the plug wires are new. So hopefully everything goes good. We're gonna go ahead and get this thing backed up. I've already you know checked out underneath the last time I was here. And I've personally drove this truck about 150 miles over the last week or so just to try to put miles on the gears. So this truck has also been upgraded with a 410 gear front and rear. Gear should be good and broken in now. So let's go ahead on and back it up on the dyno and get to doing some rips. All right guys, so we're in the truck now up on the dyno. Been letting the truck warm up for a little bit. One thing that I have noticed with this truck and it's it's almost, it's kind of weird. So if you notice this big bank to bank issue we have, I had this issue before and I run a couple tanks of fuel to it because again, we, we put some miles in this truck to break in the gears. So I was driving it home and the customer even come by and picked it up for the weekend and drove it around but it looked like this side to side issue had gone away but now it's showing it's back so this could be exhaust leaks it could be an injector problem it could be a number of things the wide band is actually in the driver side downpipe maybe we can kind of see what it's doing there but as of right now it actually looks like this is legitimate and so dyno is in vehicle simulation mode this truck i actually have scaled the airflow so we haven't really talked about that before so i'll go ahead on and show you so basically what you do on these is with a with a boosted vehicle if you have a vehicle that's gen 3 where the boost can vary like with a boost controller like turbocharger or something like that it's really best to do this on all of them but really more turbo vehicles than anything you would actually notice that on spark cylinder air mass were limited at 1.2 grams and this truck is obviously going to make more than 1.2 grams so what some tuners will do is they'll just leave it alone. They'll run the correct injector data in it and they'll just basically let the truck where it falls along the bottom of this table. And that's just where it's at. I don't like to do that. I like the truck to be able to have timing in it versus boost. So the best way of doing it is gonna be scaling the airflow. And how you do that is, is you just literally just cut your injector flow rate in half. And then in order to make that function, you have to go over to your V table and you cut it in half. And then you have to go to your math table and cut it in half. And then you have to go under your spark tables and understand that everything is gonna be half. So you're gonna have to take your 0.16 row, move it up to 0.08, you know, and so on and so forth. 0.24 row, you just go down to 0.12, do it here. You have to do this with idle spark advance as well. You have to do it based off of intake temp needs to be done that way. Engine coolant temp needs to be done that way. Anything that runs cylinder air mass as the axi or cylinder air mass at all needs to be cut in half. So then what you would do is anything that's torque based on this truck, you need to run everything as half. So under, um, let's see what some is torque based. So go under, under torque model, your AC compressor versus IET, this needs to be halved. Your friction needs to be halved. Your accessory torque needs to be halved. Anything that's torque based needs to be halved. Oh, especially on your transmission side. So a lot of guys forget this step. Transmission, especially on a 4060 or 4080 in Gen 3, the line pressure is based off of torque. So you need to go under your normal table and you would move, so 40 needs to go down to 20, 80 needs to go down to 40 and so on and so forth. And you would just sh shuffle all this pressure down to where 640 would actually be at 320 now. And it's gonna be the same with shift timing. It's gonna be the same with pressure modifiers. Anything that's torque based has to be halved. So that's a lot of information. What I'll probably end up doing is I'll probably do a full how-to and post it up in the members only area 
So if you're not a member, you can go on and jump on there now. I'll probably do that in the next, we'll say in the next week or two, I'll go on and show exactly how to scale. Like I can actually take this specific tune and show you the before and after of scaled versus not. But anyway, so that's where we're at on this. But data logger is going, fuel trims. I, I pretty much trust bank two more than I do bank one as of right now. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna watch O2 sensor millivolts at under full throttle. And we'll see once we get some airflow going across it, are they still gonna be separate? If they're still separate, then we may wanna pull out the injectors and have them flow checked. This truck's actually sat, like these injectors were new, but this truck's actually sat for like almost a year with these injectors in it. So we may have to do that, I hope we don't. But otherwise, short-term idle trims look okay. I need to pull a little bit off whenever the truck is warm. We're up to 205 degrees right now. So we've just got a little bit of work to do. But basically what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go ahead on and drive it. So I'm gonna go ahead on and roll this window up. This is the truck with these super dark window tints. So I'm pretty much gonna disappear when I roll this window up. But well, I've already driven a little bit. So fuel trims are somewhat close on the street. So primarily what I wanna do is I wanna check, go and check this thing at wide open throttle. The truck's in second gear right now. Dino's in vehicle simulation mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock this truck in the second gear with the torque converter locked. And I'm gonna watch wideband and watch timing and I wanna watch boost. So I'm just gonna go ahead on and roll into this thing and got, kind of get an idea of if everything's lining up like I think it should. Okay, so immediately I'm noticing injector duty cycle went all the way up and the timing come down. Timing come down a lot, why? Oh, it's still down a bit, so. Damn it, I think this truck's got fuel pressure drop. Where we at ethanol content wise? I haven't even added it in here. Let me let me add ethanol content in here. So if you haven't done ethanol content on a Gen 3, it's gonna be alcohol percent. 70% ethanol. I kind of suspected it because on the street, I was having to add fuel in places that I didn't expect to. So when I pull up my V table, even, this is cut in half. And these numbers are still pretty high. And you can see where it's got a pretty drastic ramp right there. Oh, all right. I guess I'm going to either get somebody to watch the fuel pressure gauge or put the GoPro on it. So I will be back. Also, before I put the GoPro out there, before I do any other pulls, this thing, uh, if you look at O2 sensor millivolts, bank one versus bank two, I think it actually has a bank to bank issue as well. I mean, obviously that's not good to keep an engine alive. So I'm also noticing torque is really high because keep in mind, torque is halved. So 485 foot pounds of torque on this truck right now. I mean, that's a, that's a, it's a lot of torque. I mean, that's, you know, whatever that would end up being almost a thousand foot pounds. So like th these numbers right here, they would be double because I half the injector flow rate. So if that shows you how much fuel we're actually using right now, all right, well, I'm gonna do a little partial pull and we'll watch fuel pressure, but I think we're basically gonna be done. And unfortunately, I think the fuel tank is gonna have to come down. And I guess I'll call the customer and see what fuel pump is in it. I think it's already got a 525 in it, but it may not. So anyways, I'm gonna get back to work. All right guys, so talk to my customer and uh, this truck has a Walbro 535 in it, which is more than enough fuel pump for this truck. So what I will tell you is, is I have actually seen guys use non-submersible fuel line and they'll, you know, put the pump in that way. And I've also seen the submersible fuel hose still deteriorate. So Quantum Fuel System actually offers a, I believe they call it like a six millimeter to eight millimeter fuel hose that works perfectly on this like 03 to 06 pickup that runs the 535. So I have a feeling that the hose is split internally. Um, I'm also gonna check it for kinks on the fuel line. But anyways, we're gonna go ahead on and do a little partial pull. And I'm gonna take a video, or I'm gonna attempt to take a video of the fuel pressure gauge. So you guys will be able to see, you know, if the fuel pressure is actually dropping or not. But I'm 90% I'm sure that just by looking at the V table on this thing, that fuel pressure is dropping. So, All right, we're gonna go on and do a pull.
All right, so you guys will have already seen it, but I need to get out and check the video. So looking under the truck, first off, you'll see that little bit of a film. That is the transmission leak. The truck's got a small trans leak, not a huge deal, but it looks like we have Earl's fuel line. It says max, oh, okay, max working pressure. I don't see anything other than Earl's. Oh, Earl's super, I don't know, I'll look up that kind of hose. But either way, it's got a fuel filter right here, which is good, but that could be clogged. I did notice that the truck has a 10 gauge wire that looks like it's running to the fuel pump. So that's good. I mean, that's, you know, 535s definitely need upgraded wiring. So if you're trying to run a 535 in your pickup truck, you're definitely going to want to upgrade the wire. But this hose, I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of it. It's just kind of routed around with zip ties. Now keep in mind, this truck was built somewhere else. And the shop that I'm using the dyno at is just trying to sort through some of the issues. But I don't see any kinks or anything. So I'm gonna look up that hose and see if that hose is ethanol safe. But otherwise, I'm really thinking that it's got a busted hose internally inside the fuel pump pickup. All right guys, so unfortunately we have another unfinished project. So this truck, as you guys saw, had all that Earl's, I looked it up as an Earl's super stock hose. And that hose is only designed for ATF, oil, coolant, or race gas. It's not even rated for pump gasoline that has a little bit of ethanol in there. So my assumption is going to be that the rubber hose is internally breaking down because of the ethanol. And again, this shop, this shop's just going through and fixing what had already been done. So I'm also going to assume that the, it's got a Walbro 535 in the tank and it has been wired, you know, as you guys saw, it's got 10 gauge wire, so the wiring should be good. But I'm gonna assume that that super stock hose is probably between the pump and the pickup as well, which that hose is not submersible either. So they're gonna replace it with this. This is a Quantum Fuel Systems six mil to eight mil hose. And this is specifically designed for putting a Walbro 450 or bigger pump on your like 9906 pickup truck. So you can get these from Quantum Fuel Systems. So they're gonna do that. It's gonna replumb the truck with Dash 8. Go on ahead, you know, we're gonna use PTFE hose. And so it's going to be replumbed all the way up to the regulator, both the feed and the return. And just as preventative maintenance, because of me thinking that the hose is breaking down, we're going to go ahead on and pull these injectors out and send them off to Eric Durr out of Bowling Green, Kentucky, have him clean them. Because as you guys saw, we have the side to side fueling issue as well. It could be exhaust leaks, but after seeing what I'm seeing, I have a feeling it's going to be rubber inside the injectors. So that with this truck, again, they're on stock. Anytime you're doing, dealing with force induction on stock ECU, there is no closed loop compensation at wide open throttle. So we need to make sure that the fueling is spot on because once I'm done tuning this truck, that, that, you know, basically the injector pulse width is going to be the same no matter what. So it, the truck's not gonna be able to compensate for it. So we've got to make sure we dot our I's and cross our T's. So anyways, guys, you're going to get to see the payoff on this truck eventually. Hopefully this thing gets replumbed next week. So this truck will probably be back on the dyno in the next week or two. So you guys will get to see that. We're hoping for like 650 to 700 wheel. Um, the truck's supposed to make 14 pounds, so on a healthy, this is essentially like a, we'll call it a forged LS, or we'll call it a forged LQ9, how about that? So forged LQ9 with, with camshaft and twin turbos, it should, it should make some pretty decent power. So they're also, I'm curious to see what this Performer Built transmission does. I've never dealt with those guys, but so far they seem, you know, pretty confident in the build and we actually had to talk to them today and their tech support seemed pretty decent. So hopefully this transmission is going to take whatever the abuse that the customer's going to throw at it. But anyways, guys, thanks for the likes, the subscriptions, the comments. Uh, again, if you're looking for a membership to see some of my behind the scenes stuff, the link will be in the description below. I've also got linked in the description, as always, the HP Tuners MPVI 3. I've got an AEM CAN based wideband, and I also have a link to a Greg Banish tuning book. So you guys are more than welcome to check out those links. So otherwise, I'll talk to you guys. It'll probably be Monday or Tuesday before the next video. I will drop another members only video over the weekend for sure. And I may, I may end up making another video for this part of the channel as well. So we'll see. But anyways, talk to you guys later.